strongly qualified to be a pilot and you get your wings okay. and they are pinned on your chest and that becomes a, a hallmark of your life. It's a watershed of your life and okay. you have finally come through all those uh, and you know you had to have passion for that, right. what you want to achieve. Right. Because you were, you know, you were regimented, your personality is totally taken away from where you are and molded into something different. But okay. all the your, your um, <clears throat> I mean, I'm not talking in platitudes, but I think all the uh, attributes that you have, the positives that you have, they are uh, channeled to, to make you a better person. So, you know, when you finish uh, the academy, you come out a more, uh, uh, more formatted person, you know, okay. more, more uh, mature person. Okay. So from there you get posted to, you see the, uh, the better pilots get posted to uh, fighter squadrons and the ones who are slightly down below, they go to transports and so on and so forth. It's, uh, um, but in our case, it was quite different. The top boys from our course was sent to the transports because the transport squadron at that time, the transport uh, wing rather, uh, was not doing very well and the commander mm -hmm. in chief was very concerned that he should send uh, the best lot so that to, and, okay. and, and did that made a lot of difference and made a world of a difference to the transport when my course mates like uh, Air Marshal, later on Air Vice Marshal Masood Khan, Chunara, uh, Suhail and uh, people like that went in there and they all became exceptional pilots in, in their time. So some of us were sent to fighter squads. You see, in the Salpur, uh, I, 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 I passed out in the middle of the course. So I didn't do exceptionally well because it was totally new to me and so on okay. and so forth. My passion was far greater than my ability and my capabilities. <laughs> but then, when, on the first fighter conversions that we did, uh, suddenly I blossomed. I mean, it, I, I stood second on the course. Okay. And uh, it, a major change came in my whole thing. And from then on, life always was a climb for me by the grace of God. And uh, then I was uh, <clears throat> posted to a fighter squadron in Peshawar, okay. but for a very short time. Okay. Uh, but under a great commander, Masrur Hussain was a great commander. It, it makes a lot of difference who your superior is. And my father had warned me when I was going to the Air Force that, remember when we were serving in this service and uniform, you'll find two kind of people. You'll make mistakes. There'll be one kind who will punish you beyond uh, reason, beyond logic. Now that's the weak kind of a commander. The other commander, the strong one, will admonish you, but he'll advise you more than he'll punish you. And that became a sine qua non in, in life. And I could see that all the time throughout my life that I could tell, okay, father, yes, here is the weak one and here is the strong one. So, you know, you, you, you experienced that. I got posted to jet squadron. Uh, there was only one jet squadron at that time in Pakistan. Okay. And to be a pilot in that jet squadron was quite a, well, you know, you sort of walked six inches above the ground <laughs> and all that stuff. So that posting in itself gives you a, a new high. And you know, I faced death several times during that squadron because the cost, concept of flight safety and things were not that uh, developed. Twice I had to eject that From the aircraft. Zero from the aircraft once okay. from a burning aircraft the second time it had uh, its controls were completely frozen and that was very for both times pretty close now you see i mean you see that might be around the corner but then somebody is taking care of jab hoti hai uh, jaise aapne do wars mein uh, shirkat ki to jab jang hoti to kaisi feeling hoti hai as far as the armed forces are concerned aap logon ke beech mein ek uh, kaisa wo environment hota hai uska kaisa atmosphere hota hai you see First of all, <clears throat> wars are no answer to, uh, uh, they don't, they're not a solution to any problems. Okay. Which one does. And, but uh, a country has to have a defense force. Right. And the purpose of the defense force is to be a deterrent. Okay. And in order to create a deterrent, each force, whether the Army, Navy, Air Force, and Marines or whatever, they must be 
trained, motivated to, to love their country first and to be ready to die for it. But then they have to be led by such men who they know will die for the country. Take so it. these are some basics, uh, uh, fundamentals of the services. And once the deterrent, you see the deterrent is there to take care that all problems will be solved politically and diplomatically, like we in India are constantly at that thing. But when you cross that line where you negotiations stop and you cannot communicate with each other, then of course war comes. But unfortunately when you ask about war, the war of 65 has been very wrongly presented by us. Okay. It has been wrongly given to the nation, but Pakistan was saved by the armed forces. Let's be clear on that, that Pakistan okay. was saved by the armed forces, by the soldiers, by the um, people in naval uniform, and especially the Pakistan Air Force. And they were at their best, uh, professionally, in their uh, jazba, in their spirit, and in their sense of patriotism. And this was despite the fact, and that's the most important thing to know, that our leadership had led us into that swamp. See, all these things go back into history. Because there is an embryo, and that embryo spawns and then brings uh, people and nations into the situation they are in. And we must go back and find as to what went wrong with history. If the leadership was not right, then it is not possible that the armed forces will win. Or that the armed forces can defend Pakistan. So how do you say this in your statement? Each service has a head. Okay. And he sets the pace, right? Yeah. But the armed forces of Pakistan had been inherited from the British. So we inherited the British discipline. Okay. We inherited the British training. I have no shame in admitting that, that the British, uh, 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 British uh, standard of training, of discipline, and all the other aspects of uh, wars, uh, you know, the, the knowledge of strategy, the knowledge of tactics, uh, uh, these were, uh, they were excellent. And a lot of the people, uh, majority of the people in the armed forces were excellent soldiers. The Pakistan army is one of the best armies in the world. And uh, it was uh, uh, known and it was recognized by the British themselves that they, they, these are the best fighters in the world. Now, the people who are fighting in the field, they still retain the pride of their profession and the excellence of their profession. That is why they fought with that spirit, which they did with 65. But the, the, the army was not prepared and the commander-in-chief of the Pakistan army, General Musa, had sent 25% of the uh, people on leave, like in peacetime. And when uh, they sent uh, these 8,000 people in Kashmir, he had not called those people back. And he, they said that, no, India will not come because, you know. So when the Indians came finally, because we, our uh, general, uh, like Akhtar Malik and uh, some of the others, they were uh, steamrolling. They went across, they captured uh, um, Chum first and they were going to Aknur, that is the neck of Kashmir. And his hand, his clutch was right there in the neck of Kashmir. And that Kashmir problem would not have existed today except for that day, that, first, that 31st of August or 30, 31st of August is one of the most tragic days of this country, but the people of Pakistan do not know that. That when he was close to Aknur, which is the only uh, lifeline to Kashmir from India, and they were about to capture it. The Indian generals in their books, one of them is called um, Behind the Scenes by General Jugendar Singh, who was the chief of staff of, the, of that corps, of that, sorry, of that uh, uh, Western command, uh, who was, uh, who's written a book. And he said that all, for all intents and purposes, Aknur was gone. And he said the main uh, uh, defense of Aknur, which was um, uh, the, the artillery regiment to defend Aknur, and we were flying over Aknur all the time, and there was a lot of uh, anti-aircraft that used to come at us, and it was very heavily defended. And when they got the news of Akhtar Malik's 12th Division uh, steamrolling, like a, in a blitzkrieg, right across the uh, 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 Tavi and across uh, this, uh, what you call, uh, uh, Cham, going for Aknur. And as I said, that Aknur was in his clutches, and intrigue was taking place in the palaces in Pindi and in Saidu Sharif, where the president was. And through that intrigue, they stopped this general 
who was about to take Akhnur, and that meant India was cut off from Kashmir completely. Okay. And the Indian general, Jaginder Singh, has said that the artillery regiment, the officers and men, they abandoned their guns and they ran, they defected the Indians. And he says, we have never been able to live that shame down to today because uh, Akhtar Malik, the speed at which he was coming, there was no question that within 24 hours, he was going to take over Aknur and then he was going to go for Jammu. So that was the state of our, the spirit and the, and the excellence of our armed forces when there was a palace intrigue taking place and they, they, they took the gun from uh, this, this winning general's hand and uh, put it on his head, removed him from his uh, post, from that post and put General Yaya in his place with instructions to General Yaya that do not take a knur. You, this country, this nation doesn't know as to what this, how our history has been uh, convoluted, perverted. And if we had taken a knur, Indians would not have been able to come across with such a force across to Lahore, Sialkot and, and, and down south as they did. Uh, because uh, if we had taken a knur, the India, Indians would have diverted their forces to go and take back a knur. Sir, this uh, spirit, this spirit, this spirit, why do we think that when there is a war of war, and in the past, there are also wars, why do we feel the feeling of unity in the war? Why do we feel the unity in the war? Why do we feel the feeling of unity in the war? It is, it is a national weakness. Why? You can see that when... I can give you an example with that sound right away. But you see little pup, pups fighting in a street. Huh? And when they see a... Uh, uh, um, a bull terrier, right. you know, or a water, rot coming. It's very different than his they guy. All, they all go and get together Take and it. they want to fight him or they start barking at least, is right? And the moment he's gone, they start fighting again. So we, we always uh, try and show, but this is not the unity that Qaeda Azam meant. You see, Qaeda Azam wanted to keep this, keep unity as this focus and the, uh, the uh, focus of this nation. And if he had stayed united, we would have never gone through these uh, problems. Now what do you think would landing. bring the true and honest leadership out at this moment of crisis in it, Pakistan? It's the youth. My, listen, what my message to the youth is that hope is, you see, hope is faith and faith is God. And we must never lose hope because this country has come so far here, Jay. it will always survive. But the thing is that time in, time in, 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 in velocity Jay. has is changed. You see, the last 60 years were different. The time is moving too fast now. Okay. Therefore, the youth of this country must be ready to make some sacrifices. We are not ready for a revolution because for revolution, you need a Mao Zedong. You need uh, uh, Ho Chi Minh. Uh, you need um, Castro. You need people like that. What we need, what we don't need is transition, which we are going through now which we've gone through before we are constantly going through a transition one worse than the other as qaeda azam had said that every government that comes will be more corrupt than the other this he had said and qaeda azam had also said before pakistan came into being in 1945 that corruption and nepotism is a cancer it's a curse in india but amongst the muslims the uh, educated muslims uh, it is rampant. Who would guide the youth? That's the point. You need leadership. The, pick the leadership. It is in the corners of Pakistan. It is in the streets of Pakistan. You can find it if you just look beyond this veil uh, of embellishment that you see.